Sherburn is a county in Minnesota just to the northwest of Minneapolis. The county was formed on February 25th, 1856, and it was named after a prominent attorney in the area named Moses Sherburn. The county is very picturesque. It has scattered communities, rolling hills, blue lakes formed by glaciers a long time ago. Sherburn is just this county of small towns just outside of the big city where people grow up and they kind of all know each other. There really isn't anything that that much of note to discuss in this county except for a county that has no gold rush and no real history of ever discovering any gold in this county there are five stories that I'm going to tell today of lost gold in this county alone welcome to hidden treasures where we tell stories of lost treasure lost mines any stories that I find interesting and hopefully you do too today we're talking about the lost gold of Sherburn County Around the time that the county was founded, there was an interesting character roaming around the area of what is now Blue Hill Township. The township is named Blue Hill because there's a mound that raises an elevation of about a thousand feet, but about 75 feet above the surrounding area. It's kind of a landmark in the area that everybody knows about. This character that lived in this area at the time was known to be somewhat of a hermit. He also wore animal skins from presumably animals that he killed, and he skinned the animals and made garments out of them and sewed them himself. He was a very interesting character that a lot of people knew and knew about, but but nobody really knew anything about him. He very much kept his past to himself. However, when people would talk to him, when he would come out and people would run into him, he was known to be very friendly, very kind, very warm-hearted, and everybody liked him. Even though he lived in this dugout that he made for himself and wore clothes that he made himself, he was also known to be very rich. He was known to give money to the needy, to anyone that was down on their luck, he would give them money. And when people needed some money that they would pay him back later, he would give them loans. And when he gave out the loans, a lot of times he just gave that money away too and never expected anybody to actually pay him back. Because nobody knew anything about his past, they also actually didn't even know what his real name was, so everyone just called him Old Sherburn. This is basically all the information that was known about him when he passed away in 1882, and he was buried in Blue Hill Cemetery. But what happened to all of the money? So at the time, people believed that this money had been buried somewhere around Blue Mound, but they also thought that it could be in his dugout. Presumably, people went looking for it. They went to his to his dugout home and looked for it, but nobody ever found anything. But the mystery of his wealth didn't last long. Shortly after he passed away, a man from Indiana showed up claiming to be his long lost brother. He claimed that he was there after his brother had passed to get all of his things in order and take anything that he needed back to Indiana. While he was there, he began talking to the locals and he was quite a bit more open about their past than old Sherburn had been. He revealed that his brother had actually owned part of a company back east that had done very well his brother had actually sold off his share of the company for $40,000 in gold coins. The locals thought when old Sherburn gave him money, it was always in gold coins, so this all added up. The brother then spent the next month in Blue Hill Township searching all around Blue Mound for these buried gold coins. He didn't find those gold coins. He left empty-handed, and apparently no one since has ever found those gold coins either. So those gold coins should still be there. In 1862, soldiers were transporting an army payroll from Fort Snelling to Fort Ripley. Along the way, they were tipped off by a dispatcher that there were hostile natives in the area and that they had to get to Moncado. They had to get out of there fast and they believed that there was a good chance that they were also going to be captured by these natives on their way to Moncado. They didn't want the money to fall into the hands of the natives, so a paymaster and one soldier buried the payroll in a place where only those two knew where it was. Sure enough, they were killed in a battle a short time later, and anyone who went back was not able to locate where the treasure had been buried. 
In a second account of that same story, the soldiers actually came into contact with these hostile natives. Along Battle Brook, just north of Elk Lake, these soldiers hid from the natives and waited it out until it got dark. In the darkness, while the two soldiers were hidden, they buried the payroll at the base of a large oak tree that had distinct features that they would remember. In order to get away from the natives, they whipped their horse. The horse took off running through the woods. The natives heard the horse, thought that the men were making a break for it, so the natives took Took off after this horse that didn't have a rider. While the natives were gone after this horse, the two men took off the other direction. The two men made it back to Fort Snelling, but this was also in the winter, so snow covered the area. They couldn't get back out until spring, and once spring came, there was a fire, and all of the trees burned down, including that large oak tree with distinct features. So when they went back out, there was no way to tell where they had buried this payroll. According to the legend, that payroll is still out there today. No one has ever found it. Just east of Blue Hill Township is a lake called Blue Lake, and it is just near Baldwin Township. The lake is said to have gotten its name from a Frenchman that lived on the lake named Blue. The locals in the area called it Blue's Lake, and that later on just turned into Blue Lake naturally. At the end of the lake was a second lake, and a small channel was dug between the two lakes to connect them. One winter, a local man was crossing this channel as it was the narrowest part between the two lakes to get across from one side to the other. He was crossing this channel, which was very shallow and very, very narrow, so it was a very simple crossing. But at this time, the ice was not thick enough. He fell through the ice, and when he did, while he was struggling to get out, he had a bag of gold coins in his pocket that fell out. Even though this channel was only about three feet deep, he dug and dug and dug in the mud and silt at the bottom, and he couldn't find these gold coins. Again, those coins are lost and still have not been found. In another story of lost gold coins, two men built a fish house on Blue Lake. They built this fish house very nice. They put some benches inside. They even built bunk beds on the inside. They built these bunk beds and they would lay in them with blankets while they were fishing. One day they were fishing and the man in the top bunk noticed that his rod had bent over and that he had caught a fish. The man leaped from his bed to grab the pole when he did gold coins that were in his pocket. It was just a few gold coins, but they flew out of his pocket and slid right down the hole that they had cut in the ice to fish. There was no way for the men to get down through this ice to find these coins. They were gone and they presumably are still there today. And the final story of lost gold is a fun little story that comes from the town of Zimmerman. This story comes from an old local named Lawrence Myers. His dad, who was also his neighbor, told him the story of how his dad's house had been built. The house had been built out of concrete blocks in 1915. While the bricklayers were building the house, one of the bricklayers took a gold coin out of his pocket, placed it in one of the blocks, and then covered it with cement. The other man that was building the house with him saw him do this and asked him why he placed that gold coin in the brick. The bricklayer said that someday when this house is old and crumbling, some construction worker is going to come out and tear down this house. And when he does, he's going to find that gold coin. And not only will he have this old antique gold coin, but he'll also wonder how that coin got in that wall. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If so, don't forget to leave comments, like, and subscribe. It really helps out. Thanks for watching.